I'm headed to a home that has elevated radon levels. Radon is a naturally occurring radioactive gas formed from a byproduct of uranium, which is found in rocks and soil beneath our feet. That radon gas can rise up and enter through the slab, foundation wall, through a water pipe or a sump pump basin. And if the concentration rises too high, it can become problematic because it's the number one cause of lung cancer for non-smokers. Now the only way to test is actually to monitor. You can't detect it with your nose. It's invisible, it's odorless. And in this case, the homeowner installed a monitoring system so we know that they have an elevated radon level. So we've got to install an active system to solve their radon problems. I'm headed to the homeowner's house right now to take a look. You must be Vincent. I am, Ross. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So you wrote in about elevated radon levels. So tell me the backstory and how you came to that. I did. Uh, so I just recently inherited the house from my grandparents. Okay. And I would say about five years ago, uh, their dog died of lung cancer. Oh, wow. And I learned that's pretty rare, uh, especially since the dog wasn't among smokers. Mm. So did a little research, found out about radon, and found out that radon does cause lung cancer. Yeah, radon's actually the number one cause of lung cancer for non-smokers and then pets are you know, at a higher risk because of the fast respiratory rate. They're indoors for, many, you know, for long periods of time, and radon gas likes to settle in the basement, mm -hmm. where a lot of times pets spend a long period of time as well. Yes, yeah, so now I'm kind of worried about myself, but also my new dog, Daisy, who's running around here somewhere. So I did a little bit of research, and I've noticed that uh, the neighbors over there have their own radon mitigation system. Yeah, I can see that, the and, white pipe coat at the side. Uh, I mean, they have it. I mean, we definitely have an issue. And so I bought a radon test and noticed like very high levels of radon. You do? So you already have a radon monitor? I do. Okay. So can we take a look at that? Yeah, sure. It's right inside. Awesome. All right, Ross, I got the radon monitor right here. Well, you're already one step ahead. What we usually like to do is test with a continuous monitor like that mm -hmm. to just see what the radon levels are over time. So how long that's been installed? Uh, this has been here for about three months and I have some of the data right here. So. This oh, is yeah. like my three month average and we're looking at like a 12.7. That's picocuries per liter and the EPA recommends an action level of four. So wow. you're about three times the EPA limit on the average right now. Wow. The other thing that, to point out here is that if you look at the one day average, you can see over the course of this last day, mm -hmm. it literally fluctuated from three to 15. So a lot of people think that radon levels are static, like you do a short-term test and that's it. Mm -hmm. But this is why we stress continuous monitoring is that it's very dynamic, it's always changing. Mm -hmm. You add cold weather outside, you add in you know, uh, exhaust fans, like ventilation systems, bath exhaust, dryer venting, you add in high groundwater, or like with a lot of rain, mm -hmm. you add wind, you add those things, it's gonna change, right? It's gonna create more chances for radon gas to get pulled into the basement. Okay. So with this, we recommend action for sure. And what goes into that? So uh, that would be a radon mitigation system, and we call that an active sub-slab depressurization system. Okay. It's a fancy way of saying we're going to take a white PVC pipe, we're going to drill a hole in the slab, stick a pipe down through it. We're then going to bring that pipe up, bring it out through the side of the building, through the rim joist, and bring it up the side of the building. Mm -hmm. We're going to put a fan on it so that it's active, meaning it's, it's operational, and that's going to create a suction underneath the slab. So we're giving an escape path for that radon to basically get pulled from below the slab and run it out through the roof, okay. never having a chance for it to actually enter the basement. Okay. This can be really easy to do, or it can be really complicated to do, depending on the age of the house. I assume the house is pretty old, but how old is it? Yeah, it's about 100 years old. Okay. So with an older house like this, we probably have compacted dirt and soil underneath our slab. Mm -hmm. In a new house, we'd have a nice gravel base. So when we put that fan down in a new home, it's usually pretty easy to create that suction throughout the entire concrete slab because you have a gravel base that allows all that radon gas to move. Okay. In your old house, it might be a little bit more complicated because of the compacted earth. We don't have that kind of passageway. You know, we call that pressure field extension. We don't have enough airflow underneath the slab. So we're gonna do some tests to verify that. Okay. Other thing is well water. Are you on a well or a domestic water well from a, uh, from a town? There's no well water. No well. Okay, yeah. great. That would be the other thing that's completely separate, but radon gas can enter through the well water on a well system. Mm. But you don't have that issue, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay. Uh, next thing is we're going to call a certified radon mitigation company to come help us out. I already did that, and so Chris should be here. I'm going to go meet him outside, and we'll get started. All right. Thank you, Ross. All right. Cool. Thanks. All right. Vincent. Ross. Meet Chris. Chris, Vincent. Hey, nice, nice to, to meet you. you. He's going to help us with the radon mitigation system, yeah. and so we'll start with that visual inspection. Okay. All right. All right sounds good. 
So what, what we're ultimately doing here is looking for any openings in the slab. So I'm gonna have to put some mortar right here. Uh, looks like there's another opening over here. So what we're trying to do is because we want to seal that up so that we can, when we create that suction beneath the slab, that we're pulling the random gas beneath the slab and not from the basement space. Okay. So looks like there's a clean out over here that I'll have to seal, put a cover and seal with some caulking. Yep. So we'll seal up that, that corner clean out. Still give you access if you need to access it, but at least it's going to be sealed up so that radar can't come up through that opening. Okay. There. The other thing we're going to do is grab samplers. So what those are, in the four corners, Chris is gonna set up a very accurate radon monitor. And we're gonna leave the house for 30 minutes. We're gonna watch the radon levels in the four corners to see how the radon moves through the basement. Is it more in this corner? Is it more in that corner? Is it more in that corner? Where is it? Is it equally dispersed? We're trying to figure out how that radon uh, flows through the basement. Okay, and that's how you determine which access point to Put the mitigation system in. That's exactly right, okay. yeah. The hottest spot, I mean the part that has the highest radon level, is ideally where we create that suction point and drill that hole okay. through the slab. Yep. So we've got the results of the grab samples, so let me show you that. So we were at between five and seven in all of the other three corners, but this corner was almost 22. Uh, wow. So this was definitely the hottest radon level. So this yeah. would be the best place to create that suction point uh, to basically pull that radon gas and let it get out of the building. Okay. So uh, Chris, what do you think for location wise? Yeah, I think a good place to go out would be up in between these two uh, joists. So if we could move this, we might be able to drill a hole right here if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, so we'll do a hole here, and we're also gonna drill three other holes at the other three corners. So when we hook up a shop vac, we can actually measure the pressure between this hole and the other three corners of the basement so we can understand how much airflow we have underneath the slab. Okay, so we've got the four one-inch holes in the four different areas of the basement. Yep. We've got Chris with the, with the shop vac over there at the main suction point. And what we're looking for is airflow pathways from the holes that we've drilled back to the main hole, okay? okay. So the first thing I do is for visual representation is, is smoke. So this is theatrical fog. And so without the fan running, we can just see that nothing's really going down the hole. Yeah. But now, Chris, if you can turn on that shop vac. He's pulling a negative pressure, watch this. See it? Wow. We're good, yep. So we're proving that we have an air pathway from this hole back to that hole when you create that suction. Okay. Right? So that's visual, and now we can also do it with pressure, right? So this is the one that we see the most. This is called a manometer. What it is, is a pressure gauge mm -hmm. that measures the differential of pressure between this tube and this opening right here. So we're measuring the pressure below the slab with reference to this basement space. Okay. So we can see that we're at a very, very low level. Yeah. All right, now if we turn the shop vac on, Chris, if you turn that on for us. Now watch it go up, negative 0 0.02, right? Okay. 0.18, so we have that negative pressure now, again, proving that we have an air path yeah. underneath. Okay. All right? Wow. So if we put a fan there, we're gonna create suction here, we're gonna get that radon gas out. Great. Awesome. Okay, so that's great for this hole. Next up, we do the same test at the other two holes. Make sure we have an air pathway back to the fan, and then we can let Chris get to work. Okay, great. Sounds good. Now that Chris has made a four and a half inch hole opening, we can remove the material underneath that opening to make sure that we have a proper reservoir or sump to allow that radon gas to collect to be pulled up through the suction point. Now we'll use a host of different fittings to allow that four inch PVC pipe to transition to three inch to then run up the wall and out through the rim joist. With that made, we can have a fan on the exterior of the building and have Heath, the electrician, wire up that fan. And we're in business. Heath, perfect timing. How are you, Ross? We ran the radon fan, the mitigation system is in, we are ready for power. Yeah, get the easy part. There's a little bit of power over here, we'll be good. Uh, so looking at the basement, it looks like it's pretty simple to get to. All we have to do is install this weatherproof disconnect outside. Uh, it's our service switch, so it's just simply this on and off. And all that's involved in this is really the plastic housing. We're gonna have a piece of conduit go up, 
it's a standard switch. Yep. But you can see inside, when you put that on, it just simply toggles it on and off. Nice. And with the cover, we have the option to lock it on or off as well. So we'll nice. keep this thing running. Yeah, so keep it on all the time, but if you need to service it, it's nice to kill it. That's it. All right, all right cool. We're gonna go see Chris back inside. All right, Vincent, the radon mitigation system is in, it's operational, the fan is moving air. Great. So just a couple of things. Um, this is a manometer, and as long as the fluid is higher here than it is here, uh, and doesn't look like it's even, like that, ah. then that means the fan is working. Okay. So if the fan ever stops, that will even out at zero. That's a good visual indicator, just to make sure it's working. Yeah. Yep. Also, this alarm will go off. Once a minute, it'll beep to let you know the fan's not working. Okay. All our information's on here. Okay. So if, if that ever stops, just feel free to give us a call. I will. So how long does the fan last for? On average, the fan will last for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, there's a five-year warranty on the fan. Oh, okay. So if it ever dies, then just give us a call, and we'll come out and swap it out. Okay, great. So also over here, we have a uh, continuous radon monitor. Mm -hmm. So we're going to leave that for a few days. Let that run to make sure that the levels stay below four. Okay. It's important to, uh, to test every couple of years. So after to make sure the system is still working. Mm -hmm. okay. What's great about that, you already have a continuous monitor. Right. So you can just leave that in place and then that way you always have continuous monitoring okay. every minute forever. Okay. Yep. So is there any other questions? No, thank you guys so much. All I right. really appreciate it. Daisy and I, thank you. Awesome. Awesome. All Thank right. you, Chris. Right. Thank great. you. Yeah. All right. Take care. You too. Good to see you. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.